Hey, grade sevens. Uh, so today's lesson is going to be about 3.7, uh, relating fractions, decimals, and percents. Um, so there will be three key learnings today. One, any fraction or decimal can be written as a percent and vice versa. Uh, two, uh, percent is another name for hundredths. So if you know how to figure out hundredths, uh, you know percentage. And number lines can be used uh, to show how fractions, decimals, and percents are related. So let's take a look. Um, you might you see percentages a lot, all over commercials, ads, all that thing, all everywhere. So uh, take a look with the upcoming election. Uh, this is an example. 49% of voters are undecided. Wow, what does that actually mean? Well, we know that 49% is actually 49 out of 100. So we can write that as a fraction. And once we write it as a fraction, we can then turn that fraction very easily into a decimal right there. Um, you can use number lines too. So if you look at this example, 25%. Well, we know that if we go to our number line, 25% is actually just 25 out of 100. And that's really easy on a number line to show. And then if you have the exact same number line below it as decimal, we know that 25 out of 100 is actually uh, 0 0.25. And you can show that on that same number line below it. And then as a decimal. If you look at the bottom three lines, that number line, uh, all that is right there is just taken as a decimal. So if you get 0 0.15, well, we know that 15 hundredths is equal to 15 over 100 as a fraction. And once we have it in fraction form, we can then change it to decimal, which is 15%, really easy. Okay? So I want to show you something really quick here, a video um, that kind of explains it a bit better uh, than... And I could, so let's see uh, if we can play this video for you here, okay? There are lots of times that fractions, decimals, and percents are used interchangeably, so it's really helpful to know their equivalent. You might have noticed that in this chart, the fractions are not stacked one over top of the other as they typically are. Your computer skills are probably better than mine. This is just the way that I made it work, so we'll ignore it for now. One of the ones that we're pretty much all familiar with is half. Half, in equivalent percent, is 50 percent. And its equivalent in decimal is zero and five tenths. Let's take a look at a quarter, and I'm going to use a hundred grid to help us with this. If we take the halfway mark, there's half, so half's on this side, half's on this side. One fourth, or one quarter, I could have going that way, and we can shade that in by saying this is one fourth of this. Because this hundred grid represents percent, which means out of 100, all we need to do is to count the number of squares that we've shaded in. We've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And we know that from using money, that 25 is one quarter of one dollar or 100 cents. So that'll be 25 percent. And we know that the decimal equivalent for that will be, just like this is half of 50, half of five tenths. So that will be two tenths and five one hundred or 25 one hundred. In a similar way, we can take half of this square to make eight, just like we would if we were folding paper. So we might take two rows of this. And then in our third row, we're going to have to cut that last square in half, and we can shade this part in. And that gives us an eight. And that will give us 10 of our hundredths, 11 twelve of our hundredths, 12 hundredths, and then a half of one. So that would be 125 thousandths, or we might say 12.5% or 12.5%. We'll call it 12.5%. Once we know one fourth, it's really easy to figure out three fourths because it's three times as much. So one fourth would be 25%, three fourths would be 75%. And zero and 25 hundredths will be zero and 75 hundredths. Similarly, we can look at one eighth. This is a little trickier and actually probably easier to go from a whole and merely subtract 125,000. That will give us 875,000 or 87.5%, which is almost the whole thing. Just like 7 eighths is almost the whole thing. We'll take a new hundreds grid. And because of the structure of the hundreds grid, it will be very easy for us to figure out one tenth. Let's color, trace out one tenth of this grid. One tenth of this grid will be ten of these hundredths. And that will be 
10 percent. So 10 percent. And that will give us zero and one tenth. We could also write that as 10 hundredths. And we know that we can continue to write zeros as long as we want. For now, we will call it zero and one tenth. Let's say we have one fifth. Well, if we're going to use one fifth, we're going to need two bars. So in this case, we're going to need this much. There's one fifth. You realize fifth. one fifth is 20 out of 100? Four fifths and five fifths. Each of our fifths has 20 of our hundredths in it, or two tenths. So we know that if one tenth is 10%, one fifth is twice as much. It's twice as big. So that will be 20%. Or zero and two tenths. Two fifths will be, you're right, 40%. Or zero and four tenths. Three fifths will be 60%. Or zero and six tenths. And four fifths will be 80%. Or zero and eight tenths. And so we filled in this chart with some commonly used fractions, decimals, and percents. You might want to build a chart like this of your own and think of some other fractions, decimals, and percents that you can use, and then they can be used to solve problems.